So here's a common issue. You go to the gas station, you fill her up. After filling her up, you give her an extra click or two just to get all that extra gas in there. And you go to turn your car on and it won't start. You get a crank, no start. What is it? Is it my fuel pump? Is it the computer? Is it injectors, fuel pressure regulator? Um, could be, but more so than not, it's actually your EVAP perch. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you what to do what you're, when you're in that situation so you don't have to tow it, an easy quick fix, and how to diagnose it and repair it. So let's go ahead and let's talk about what this valve is and how it works. So now this is the one for the Ford Focus. They look very similar to this. Um, typically they're two wire power in the ground. And all it is is that it opens and closes based upon what the computer requires of it. Now when the engine's off, they're closed, but when you turn the engine on, it opens, it closes, and that just depends on just a lot of different operating conditions. And I'm not gonna go into the high whole scientific reason behind that, but based upon the conditions of the engine, the valve is gonna open and it's gonna close. So now what the valve does is that it actually prevents fuel vapors in the fuel tank from escaping into the atmosphere. The EVAP system or evaporative emission control system, uh, it traps the vapors from the fuel tank and temporarily stores them into the charcoal canister until they can be burned off. So now what's happening? The most common reason your car won't start after filling up with gas is that the EVAP purge valve is stuck open. So when you fill the tank with fuel, the overpressure of air needs to go somewhere. It pushes that pressure directly into the intake manifold. And then what happens is, is that it causes too much fuel to enter the combustion chamber while cranking the engine after a refill. And this causes a hard, difficult to start vehicle, no start condition, and it gets kind of annoying. So the quick and dirty way to kind of overcome this in case you're in that situation, the vehicle won't start, wide open throttle, pedal to the, and all you gotta do is just keep doing that and the vehicle will start. And what that does is that just kind of cleans out all the excess fuel, releases that pressure, and then the car will start. It's gonna run like crap for a little bit. It's gonna stumble. It's gonna, you know, pit pop and not like wanna die on you. Don't panic, just kind of drive it, keep revving it, let it clean itself out and the car will run fine. I mean, usually this resolves itself in a couple of minutes and you're gonna see this issue every time you fill up your gas tank. Now, the more annoying part about this issue is I guess the diagnosis, because typically I have seen when this happens, you don't get a check engine light because the problem can be so intermittent. It's just, it gets stuck. The valve has just got some gum or crap in there and then the engine warms up and everything's good. It's fine. You might get a couple of fill ups and then it just comes back. So you might not get a check engine light. You might not get that whole P0441 or P0446. So it's a little annoying. One quick and easy dirty way to test is to find out if your valve is bad. Typically you'll get a code for it, but to kind of confirm the diagnosis, if the valve is bad or it's sticking, which would cause the intermittent problem, is you have two leads in there, power in the ground, use a nine volt battery, touch the leads and kind of tap it back and forth. And if the valve is opening or closing, you know the valve is good, you might have another issue. But if you notice that the valve is kind of sluggish, intermittent, getting stuck or not moving at all, then you know this is bad. All right, so on this Ford Focus, it's right over here. This is the valve. It's got our connector over there and it kind of loops right to the back over here. If you can see it right there where that green tab is and there's one right over there. So of course you have those security tabs, safety tabs, I forget what you call them. And the ways these work on this one is that you just kind of kind of pull them to the side, pull them to the side and just kind of, it's kind of hard to do this one hand. Yeah, kind of pop it like that. And then you have to find it while it's missing in your garage. So we're going to have to do it that. So the best way I find to do it, and I'll probably have to do it off camera because I can't do it two handed. Take a long screwdriver and just kind of see if you can get it in there. Just pop it out to the side, kind of like that. Pop it out to the side. That one fell out pretty easy, which I'm actually impressed. And then you push down on the green tab, which is right over here. And this thing should slide out. So I'm going to go ahead and do this because I need both my hands and then I'll show you. I can kind of show you better on this one, but as you can see, it just kind of separates, pulls back the green tab, push it in, and this thing should slide up just like so. Now we want to remove this connector, just kind of pull it up, out. Now there's a little rubber grommet where it kind of just sits where it's mounted right over here. Typically they come out easily, sometimes they don't. Spray a little WD-40 on it. All right, let's see if we can fish this thing out without taking anything else off. Okay.
Bingo. Now for the new one, make sure these tabs are in place. Make sure they're in the unlock position and not the closed position. That way it just slides right in. And if you have a hard time sliding it in, just put a little bit of uh, silicone paste right around the shaft that it goes into. That'll make it slide in pretty easy. But these came out without issue. All right, so a fairly simple, easy repair. After you've done that, you have two options. You could, well, three. If you have a code reader, you could race the code. Second thing you can do is uh, drive it 20 to 50 miles, depending on what the drive cycle is, so it can complete one, and that should turn the code off. The third option is, is that you could disconnect the battery. Make sure you have your radio codes, because if you don't have that, you have to go that to the dealer, and you know those dealers. But anyways, after that, you should be good, and you should be able to not run into this issue. Now, if the issue does come back, you could have another underlying issue, but more so than not, that purge valve is the issue when you go to fill up your vehicle and you get a crank no start and you kind of have to run it pure flood mode just to kind of get it running again. So I hope this video helps. Check out my other videos. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're not, and uh, we'll see what we fix next.